Hello, good day to you all. Welcome to Worship Tutorials. Hello, friends. In this video, we're continuing on in our journey through the modelers, the pros, and the cons. This one's a little bit longer because there's more in it. We're talking about the fractal units. Mm. The Axe FX3, yes. the ever-elusive FM9. Oh, and can the, you get one? Probably can you not. get one? Is it a unicorn? And the FM3, <laughs> these are Brian's preferred units. That's right. So, Brian... Let's talk fractal. Uh, I'm gonna talk about Wait, this. Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna go lay down because we'll probably be here for a while. And I, I'm, I'm gonna keep to... it brief. <laughs> if I am going to choose uh, my preference for a Sunday morning, I'm taking the Axe FX3, I'm taking an FC12, I'm taking an expression pedal, I'm taking a cable to connect. Tell me you're bougie without telling me you're bougie. Right. It's not an all-in-one. That's where I'm going. But it is my preferred setup. So that's pro number one. Bradford's Pro was Kemper was his preferred thing. Mine, uh, Axe FX3. Um, I think Pro number two, we believe objectively, a we believe. This is a, is a difficult thing to say. Yeah, but still. Objectively, we believe their effects are the best sounding of any unit we've ever tried. I'd say Quad Cortex has some insane reverbs. They do. That's we're not gonna do this. We'll be here for a while. But we're talking holistically. Yeah, yeah. I think I, that's the best way to put it. Offering of effects is the best. We are allowed to have opinions when yes. we play guitar about these units, yes. and that is one, and that is okay. But like I said, as objectively as possible, that's what we believe. Now, when it comes to amp tones, Bradford and I both agree that fractals are tied for the best with. We'll say this, tied, tied at the number one spot with Kemper and Quad Cortex. I don't think there's a winner between those three. They, I think they're all at the they same They all level. have and like I, and this I, thing that is different enough, yeah. but like it makes it easy to say, I could be happy with any one of these things. And, and I think we, the two of us could objectively say, between the two of us, that there isn't anything we've heard better than those, yeah. than those three. But again, that doesn't mean Helix is worse. It just means that these are the best. <laughs> this means they sound better. Okay, we're, it's so many people's brains are like, "What?" But but see, we rec Helix is always our primary recommendation. Helix is the for the reasons we heart. listed. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that here in a bit. So um, another pro for Fractal is uh, it's extremely powerful. I don't know if it's the most powerful thing because Quad Cortex is nuts. Oh yeah. But Fractal, it, the Axe FX3 and the FM9 as well. Extremely powerful units as far as what you can do with a single preset. Um, they're also very flexible uh, as far as signal routing and how what you can make your guitar signal do. Inputs, outputs, effects loops, that kind of thing. Like you can have it's nuts what you in can do one effect it. block. I've said that a couple times. It's it is. Nuts. It is pretty nuts. In one effect block, let's get nuts. You can have four other effects queued yeah. up. Now you can't use them all, any of those at the same time, but like. When we make a, a patch with three drive blocks, you don't it's get just twelve overdrives. You don't get just three drives. You get twelve. Yeah, we dial them all in, so yeah. it's insane. So power is a pro. Tweakability is again, you know, like the amp block, for example, has like I don't know how many. It's probably eight or nine tabs that are all like the controls on the amp. Okay, more controls as far as tone. Oh, Even more the, controls. Let's go to the preamp section. You want to change the two? You want to control the controls with controls? There you go. So it's uh, you want a, a pre EQ, a pre amp EQ, a post amp EQ. You want to change the the speaker impedance that it's seeing. Uh, it's it, you can really get into the weeds with it, Nick. 
It's one of one of my favorite one of Nick's favorite sayings that I busted out on him the other day. So it's crazy tweakable, and uh, the another pro is the editor is great. Objectively, it's great. Um, you can do all kinds of of awesome stuff with the editor. It's really easy to use. Uh, it's available on. It's not available on mobile. You know, but it, you, you can get it for every other major uh, operating system. Pro with it uh, is is with Tone Match. That's a, is, that's under the radar. This is a a deep cut. Uh, we talked about profiling with the Kemper. We're going to talk about capturing with Quad Cortex. With Tone Match, you can pretty much do the same thing. We have pretty much Tone Matched amps that we have in the room that don't exist in Fractals amp. Offerings. Which is crazy considering how yeah, many they amps have they have. Hundreds, it's insane. Hundreds of amp models to pick from. Uh, but with Tone Match, you can match uh, an amp that doesn't exist in, in the fractal world. And it sounds pretty much exactly like it. It's on par with capturing and profiling, yeah, in, in our opinion. Yeah, it's very similar. Okay, so Con is the price. I mentioned that that setup that I take with me every time I play guitar or electric guitar at church. Axe FX3 FC12 controller, uh, the e, whatever the fractal expression pedal is, and uh, not even counting cables to connect all. You just need two cables to connect it all. But um, that setup well, three. gives you four. Yeah, power quarter inch. That's true. TRS XLR. But you get power cable with the thing. Uh, that setup gives you the same level of functionality as a Line Six Helix. You get twelve buttons. Yeah, basically. You get an exp actually less because you get one expression pedal. Although you can set that expression pedal to do different things. Yeah. We do that in, in presets. So essentially, it's the same functionality as a Helix. Twice, two times the price, literally two times the price. It's about thirty-two hundred bucks to get that whole layout set up. Helix about sixteen hundred, so it's expensive. It is. And if you like, yeah. I was mentioning this, and I can't believe I forgot this. And if you want to put the head, the actual unit, the Helix, I'm yeah, sorry, the Axe Effects, somewhere else. Yeah, so it's like, a rack. It's a rack mounted head. Yeah, with the controller, right? And if you wanted to put it somewhere else to so just get it off stage and have less going on, yeah. you had to figure out a way to get your quarter inch to it because yeah, you, can't you can't plug can't the plug. quarter inch to the FC12. Yeah, <laughs> I wish you could because the FC12, the controller is the thing in front of you. It'd be nice to plug it in. If you're using a wireless unit, that's a non issue. That's fine. But I probably I don't know how many of you guys are using wireless units, but um, yeah, you have to run your Guitar you have to figure something out to wherever the head of the thing is. The yeah. axe effect. It's it's odd. It may yeah. not matter to you, but it's just something to consider. So, <laughs> con number two is option paralysis. Now, Bradford and I both collectively wrote this in, and I put in parentheses. Brian does not think this is a con because uh, you don't. You know, it's like well, one of the, the this is this is in our effort to be as objective. We're as trying possible. to be objective. One thing about option paralysis is like there's a couple layers of it. One, you want to choose an amp. You're going to build a preset. You want to choose an amp. Okay. You could have like four different the, versions of that amp. You pull up the amp block and it's hundreds of amps. Okay. So that's option paralysis. Now, which one do you pick? I, I mean, and and, and all, there are amps you don't even, you probably all, haven't even heard of too. And it, yeah. And they're all great. Like they don't, they don't do an amp model with it not being awesome sounding. Okay. Now you got to pull up a cab and we're not talking hundreds. It's like over a thousand because they have Impulse like responses different cabs. mic versions, yeah. and then like there's different versions of that setup. There's like here's yeah. like a, a cab for an AC30 with a 121, and here's version A, and here's yeah. version B. Yeah. It's so insane. if you come from the world of like you had an amp and you had a cab and you knew what you mic'd it with and you knew what speaker was in it, okay, that's easy because you can just find it, put it in. That's great. If you don't, many players are not coming from that world. They're like, oh boy, what do I pick? So that's option paralysis number one. If you want an overdrive block, there's like, I don't, I don't know how many overdrive models are in it's there. It's nowhere near as insane, but we're still talking like it's, 30 drives. It's a lot. Yeah. Multiple versions of Tube Screamer. Anyway, again, if you know what you want, if you want a Timmy, well, it's in there, but you got to pick, do you want the switch up? You want the switch down? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, so that's option paralysis one. Option paralysis two is... Uh, like I mentioned in the amp block, like literally hundreds of parameters that you can change. There's a lot. Um, now, you don't have to touch them all, though. Yeah, and that's why I say I don't think this is as much of an issue personally because when you pull an amp block up, 
you, the first thing you see is like the controls that are on the actual amp. Mm -hmm. What do they call it? Like authentic? Yeah, the authentic, authentic tab. Authentic or, tab? Or, I think they so you renamed see, it to the tone tab. Now. You see what the is like tab. the amp would actually give you. Yeah. And, and nothing that's below like it matters. Like a bass metal treble. Yeah, yeah, everything else. All the other pages all don't matter. All that stuff is preset so that it sounds and responds like the actual amp. If you want to change something, you can, but you don't need to. And in many cases, you probably don't want to. Okay. The only reason we would go change something like that is if we heard something that we didn't like and we wanted to change it. Yeah. So I think that the, and like the drive block, for example, you can change the kind of transistor that's in it. You can, yeah. you, there's an EQ section for every drive. You can almost mod the digital pedal to be yeah. more like a pedal that exists. So in I love the tweak ability. You might not, that might be a con for you. And we understand that that is a real thing. Cause it seems to be um, a common Thing that yeah. people mention as being a reason why they won't yeah. choose the axe. The next con is it is difficult to edit on the fly. Um, I in compared to other units, especially compared to something like the Helix. Now, um, if you learn how to do it, it's not. But you have to take the time to learn how to do it. It's it's not. I've gotten super to where intuitive. I can make pretty much any edit that I want from the unit itself, right on the right on the, the front panel, and they've added new user functionality where you can map controls to the front panel and give yourself quick access to whatever you want. Yeah, there's things you know you regularly mm -hmm. want to change, but yeah. Yeah. So uh but it it, it it can it's more complicated. It's just because the unit is so much deeper than anything else. Like the more complicated it is as far as what you can do with it, the more complicated the interface needs to be to give you control of it. Alright, so let's talk FM9 and FM3. So like a Kind of a lateral move yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Obvious differences just by looking at them. FM9. Okay, let's talk FM9. Yeah, let's start there. So pro number one is it sounds the same. Yeah. That's a pro, trust us. Uh, pro number two, size and portability. And it is, in the same sense like the Kemper Stage and the Quad Cortex, is an all-in-one. The FM9 is as well. You get, Save the expression. You pedal, get nine buttons, right? Which is... Three less than we would like to have. Just saying. You get nine buttons. Nine buttons is enough. And like with the way that you that they allow you to utilize those buttons, you can do lots. Oh yeah. With those nine. Short buttons. press, long press. Yeah. Um, layers. Yeah. You have nine different layers of buttons. So like basically Button those, combos. Actually, you can do like a yeah. heel toe thing, and it opens up yeah. another thing. And yeah. So tons of options for that. So um, pro is 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 the power on the unit. So it is. Not as powerful as far as DSP as an Axe FX3, but the way that they coded it, and it has to do with the reverbs and, and the, the chips. Yeah, and the way that they've allotted different effects to different chips. This is actually kind of crazy. Nearly as powerful as Axe FX3. You can do a dual amp set. And the way we use them is Yeah, more so specific, you can do a compressor, a pitch block like a POG or something like a micro pitch, something like that. Two overdrives, each again with four. Four different channels. I think you can do three. On all of these effects. You can do three. Well, yeah, sometimes we've used three. Yeah. Two amps, so stereo amps, uh, stereo cabs, of course, two delays, two reverbs, and modulation, all in a single FM9 preset. Um, it's crazy. And there's It's actually, hard to do more with something like Helix or even Axe Effects. Yeah, and actually, we've they run really into the thing that coded it well. you can almost do more in FM9 than in, Axe Effects, yeah. depending on how you utilize things. Yeah. It's like weird. We've run the, into instances like that. You can like set that. the quality of the reverbs higher because of the way they're... Yeah, the, the reverb in the FM9, right, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's it gets the same its own sound. chips. Yeah. It's the same sounds, but it's all allocated to a, a specific chip. That FM9 gets four chips. I don't know. Axe gets two, I but the Axe that. chips are more powerful. I have no idea. I'm 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 pretty is sure this right? is yeah. And, oh, um, sorry. I know. I'm pretty sure. Here. And like verbs on the FM9 get like their own chip. Yeah. It's, and so it you can do a little bit. It depends on yeah. how you do things. It's crazy. Yeah. So Axe Effects, just to be clear, Axe Effects has more DSP processing. It does. Power. But FM9 utilizes it in a different way. The way we make patches, yeah. we're not we're not capitalizing yeah. on all the processing power. Yeah, we want to do certain things, and we run into yeah. a wall that. I mean, who needs to put two reverbs, three delays, three drives, chorus modulation, yeah. pitch, and like you can remove we stuff. Do. We that's do, why. That's but who. that's like for like a catch-all performance. Yeah. So. so another con, like I said earlier, I would like to see three. I would love to have twelve buttons. 
Like 12 buttons is a sweet spot. I think we use Helix for so long. Mm -hmm. That's just like, the, it's a perfect workflow for like at least what we do. Yeah. Uh, nine buttons, I'd like three more. But you know, you can add a controller to it. Because we basically you can get as many use more as you want. Three for navigating, mm -hmm. anyways. Yeah, yeah. And, then and three so you have six for presets. Navigating and like utility, like tap tempo yeah. and tuner and stuff. Yeah. Know. And um, if you don't use tap tempo because you play per song, that gives you one extra button. Yeah. But you still need ways to navigate between yeah. presets. So stomps and snap and scenes. Scenes are their version of snaps. Um, okay. So the last con with the FM9 uh -huh. is you can't get one unless you pay a lot of money on the used market. And then if you do, and you void the warranty. FM9 is currently a wait list. As of today, they haven't even gotten through day one of the wait list. I got on the wait list immediately and I got And lucky we were, enough. we saw an update. They didn't send us one. I today is April 20th. We were on uh, on the impression like back in December of yeah. 2021, and it's because there's a semiconductor yeah, it's not shortage. their it's fault. Not, yeah, they just can't build them. They don't have the parts. But, but we were told March, and I don't think anything's happened. But they do this with their product releases. They have a wait list, and you have to be on their forum and know and send an email. It's a little cryptic, in my opinion. Um, you have to be kind of a fractal insider to get on the list, and yeah. then you and you have to get on the list early. To get a unit, unless you're okay with waiting for a long yeah, time. Yeah, somebody who's like new to the game. Yeah, and it's you true. can't just go to Sweetwater. You can't buy. just you can't Actually, go to Sweetwater you can't anyways. Go anywhere. You have to buy it direct. You have to buy it for practical. So um, that's a con. You can't buy one right now. I don't know. You might be watching this, and they might be available. In which case, they're awesome. But you should consider as of one. April 20, 2022. Can't get it. You can't get it unless someone you buy it for like four grand on Reverb. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do, just buy an Axe FX three. At that point. You can buy an Axe Effects right now. Okay, uh, let's move on to FM3. Pro, value. So FM3 is $1,000 new, I think. Um, and probably when FM9s become available, uh, you're going to see a lot of FM3s used on the market, I think. Uh, for that kind of money, that unit packs an enormous punch, I think. Because you the, get the same sounds. The three course, buttons don't limit incredible. how it sounds. Yes, right. Uh, another pro for the FM3, it does work well as an all-in-one. It is powerful enough. A lot of people might think that it is on par with an HX Stomp, but it's not. It's it's much more powerful than that. Um, I have done uh, Sunday mornings with FM3 and an FC6 controller, uh, which is about the same price point as a Helix. And uh, with a Helix, you can do a little more in a preset. We'll talk about that in just a bit, but the FM3 does everything I would need. We have all of our song presets are available for FM3. There's no compromises there. Uh, it's a great unit, um, very flexible, um, but there are a few cons. One is... This, this is just funny to me. What? The, the, the con. It's too big to integrate onto a pedal board. <laughs> yeah, but it's too. But it's so small as it's just like it's small, but it's, but it's big. But it's it's in a weird. It's a weird size. Like like for that size, I mean, like, can we get four buttons? <laughs> can we figure out how to make four buttons on this thing? I, so it's the same size. So the FM9 and the FM3 are the same form factor as the FC12 for FM3, or it's FC12 and FM9 and F, FC6 and FM3. That's so, not confusing at all. We know what we're talking about. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's it's like if you want to integrate it with a board, which is what I would see. A lot of people think in FM3, I want to put some pedals with it. It's hard to integrate it onto a board just because how big it is. Yeah. Um, but uh, it can do a lot. So you don't need to add stuff. You would need to add a controller for it uh, because it's only three buttons. And the other con is that it cannot run stereo amps. I wish that they would let us do it with the FM3. You're limited to a single amp. So if you want to run stereo effects into it, uh, it will sum everything to mono in that one amp block. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. This is just one video in a multi-video series where we take all of the popular modeling units that are on the market in 2022, the ones we have experience with here at Worship Tutorials, break down their pluses and minuses. So if you want to see the rest of these videos 
All of that is going to be linked below. You can also see the like over one hour long video that's all of it put together in a single video. The, this is designed to help you make the best decision for you for a modeling unit in 2022. They all have their pluses and they all have their minuses and different players might prefer different ones. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so you don't miss another upload, including the rest of them in this series. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.